Today we're going to be learning about dividing polynomials by monomials. We're going to start off by looking at the distributive property of division. First, let's have a look at an example where we have two expressions that we're going to simplify and compare. So the first one is 6 plus 9 in brackets divided by 3. And the second one is 6 divided by 3 plus 9 divided by 3. Okay, so in the first one, I have to first add the 6 and the 9 and then divide by 3 because they're in brackets. So that is 15 divided by 3, giving me 5. In the second example over here, the 6 and the 9, are st it's still addition, just like it was over there, but they are separate and they are each being divided by 3. So this gives me 6 divided by 3 is 2 plus 9 divided by 3 is 3, and that also gives me 5. Now, because they both give me the exact same answer, I can say, therefore, 6 plus 9 divided by 3 is equal to 6 divided by 3 plus 9 divided by 3. And this will work for any example that you do of the same thing, where you have two or more things being added or subtracted and then divided by something else. Or dividing each of them separately and then adding or subtracting them in the same way that you had over here. You will always end up with the same result that, and find that they are the same as each other. This is what we call the distributive property of division. Now, please be careful. The distributive property of division only works when you are dividing by one by a monomial. So you can have a polynomial, which is more than one term, being divided by a monomial, which is one term. You can't do it the other way around. Okay. So this could have been written also like this. Okay, remember, a fraction is the same as division. So I could have written it like this, 6 plus 9 divided by 3, and then split it up separately, 6 divided by 3 plus 9 divided by 3, or 6 over 3 plus 9 over 3, and then simplified each fraction separately, that gives me 2 plus 3, which gives me 5. Okay, remember, division and fractions, they, they are the same. Okay, now in this example over here, with numbers, I could just add them first and then divide. But what happens when we have something like this? 10x plus 5y divided by 5. Now here, I've got a problem because I can't add 10x and 5y in the same way that I could have added 6 and 9 because these are not like terms. And we know that in order to add or subtract, they have to be like terms. So now we are going to use this method to be able to simplify this expression. So I'm going to take each of those terms in the numerator and I'm going to split my fraction up with each of those terms as its own, as a numerator of its own fraction, but just like over here, the denominator for each of those fractions is going to be the same as what I started with. Okay, so I've got 10x over 5 plus 5y over 5. And now I can simplify each of those. Okay, now we've learned how to do division, so we know that 10 and 5 I'm going to simplify. 5 goes in there twice. And 5 goes in here once. And that gives me 2x over 1, or just 2x. And this one over here, the 5s can cancel completely, giving me 1 and 1. That gives me 1y over 1, or just y. So it's plus y. So here, I was able to simplify this fraction over here using the distributive property of division, saying each of those terms needs to be divided by 5 separately. And then I'll end up with this. You could have gone straight away and said 10x divided by 5, give me 2x. F plus 5y divided by 5, give me plus y. I recommend, while you're still getting used to this, writing the step where you split it up into individual fractions. But you'll reach a point where you don't need to do that anymore, and you can go straight to the answer. But until you're at that point, write the separate fractions so that you don't get confused. OK, so let's have a look at our first example for today. So in this example, we have got 8a plus 4b minus 10c, and that is all over negative 2. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to split up the fraction into three separate fractions because there are three terms in the numerator over there. So the first one is going to be 8a and it is going to be over negative 2. Remember, each of them is going to get that same denominator. I'm not changing the denominator in any way. The denominator is going to be the same and it's going to appear for each one of those fractions. So I've got 8a over negative 2. Then I've got a plus, so I'm going to put a plus over here. Then I've got 4b also over negative 2. Then I've got a minus, so I'm going to put a minus over here. And then I've got 10c also over negative 2. And all of those are fractions like this. So now I've got three separate fractions that I can simplify individually. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify each of these by dividing by the negative 2. So I can say I've got a positive divided by a negative. That gives me a negative. I know that I'm going to get a negative over there. Then 2 goes in there once and 2 goes in there four times, so it's going to be negative 4a. So my first term is negative 4a. Then I've got a positive divided by a negative. This is also going to be negative. So if this is a plus and that's a minus, this is going to be negative. So now I've got 4 divided by 2. 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there twice. So that's going to be 2b. So it's negative 4a minus 2 B. And then over here, I've got a minus and a minus. So that's negative divided by negative. That gives me plus. And then 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there 5 times, and I'm left with 5C. So for this ex uh, example, you should have got negative 4A minus 2B plus 5C. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. You're going to have 4 minutes to work on these examples.
Okay, so let's see how those examples went. So the first one we had was negative was 4x minus 12y minus 16z all over 4. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to split up our fraction into three parts. So I've got 4x over 4 minus 12y over 4 minus 16z over 4. And all of those are fractions. Okay, so now we're going to go and simplify. For the first one, 4x over 4, the 4s can cancel, giving me 1x over 1, or just x. Then I've got a negative divided by a positive is negative, and I have 12 over 4. 4 goes in there once, 4 goes in there three times. So that gives me 3y, so I have negative 3y. And then I've got 16 over 4, 4 goes in there 4 times, 4 goes in there once, and I end up with negative 4z. Because again, it was a negative divided by positive. So x minus 3y minus 4z is what you should have got for question A. Question B, you had d squared e to the power of 8 minus 6d to the power of 6e plus 9d to the power of 5, e to the power of 8, all over negative 1. Okay, so just like in the previous one, what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to write three separate fractions because there are three terms in, this, in the numerator of this fraction. So we're going to start off by writing d squared e to the power of 8, and that is over negative 1. Then I've got a minus. Now it is 6d to the power of 6e over negative 1, and then I've got a plus. Then I've got 9, d to the power of 5, e to the power of 8, over negative 1. So now I'm going to make those into fractions quickly. Draw my fraction lines. And now I can go and simplify. So I've got a positive divided by negative. Remember, when we divide by 1, it doesn't change. But if I divide by negative 1, it's going to change sign. So a positive divided by negative is negative d squared e to the power of 8. Then I've got a negative over here divided by a negative. That makes it a positive 6d to the power of 6e. Then I've got a positive and a negative. That makes negative 9d to the power of 5e to the power of 8. So that's what you should have got for question B. Question C, we've got 6ab plus 12ac minus 24ad all over 6a. So I'm going to start off by putting each of them as separate fractions. So I've got 6a b over 6a plus 12a c over 6a minus 24a d over 6a. Okay, I'm going to turn all of those into fractions. All right, draw my fraction lines. And now I'm going to simplify. So over here, the 6 and the 6 cancel, give me 1 and 1. The A and the A also cancel, give me 1 and 1. And that leaves me with 1B over 1, or just B. Then I've got a positive divided by a positive is plus. The 12 and the 6 simplify to give me 2 and 1. And the A's cancel. And that gives me 2C over 1, or just 2C. Then I've got a negative divided by positive, and 24 and 6 simplify to give me 4 and 1, and the a's cancel. So that gives me minus 4d. So for question c, you should have got b plus 2c minus 4d. Now let's have a look at question d. So in question d, again, same thing, we're going to start off by splitting it up. We've got 8xy over negative 4x minus 4x over negative 4x plus 2xz over negative 4x. And I'm going to put my fraction lines in. And now we're going to go and simplify. Here I've got a positive divided by negative is negative. And then the 8 and the 4 can simplify. That gives me 2 and 1, and the x's cancel. 
over here, I've got a, po a negative divided by negative is positive. So that was, sorry, that was 2y over there. Then this is negative divided by negative is positive. And then the 4s cancel, giving me 1 and 1. And the x's cancel, giving me 1 and 1. Please note, when they cancel, I get 1. I don't get 0 because it's 1 over 1 is 1. So I have to write that 1. I can't just leave it out. Even though everything cancelled, it doesn't cancel to 0. It cancels to 1. So I've got plus 1. Then I've got plus divided by minus is minus. Now in this one over here, I've got a 2 and a 1. The 2 simplifies to 1 and the, a, a 2 and a 4. The 2 simplifies to 1 and the 4 simplifies to 2. The x's cancel. And then I've got z. Now this one over here, I have got something left in my denominator, which I haven't had in any of the other ones we've done so far. Okay, so I'm going to end up writing this one as a fraction. So this is going to be minus because it was positive divided by negative. So it's minus. And then my numerator is z over my denominator, which is 2. And that's what you should get for question B. Okay, so now let's go to our next example where we're going to have a slightly more complicated one that we're going to be doing. So we've got negative 10, a to the power of 5, b, c to the power of 6, plus 4a cubed, b to the power of 7c cubed, minus 18, a cubed, b cubed, c to the power of 7. And that is all over negative 2a b squared c cubed. Now it looks a lot more complicated, but really it's actually exactly the same thing that we're going to be doing. We're just going to be using what we've been doing in these other questions and combining it with what we learned in the last lesson. We were doing division using the the rules um, for exponents, for, di for dividing uh, powers of the same base. So over here I've got negative 10a to the power of 5, bc to the power of 6, over negative 2ab squared c cubed. Then I've got plus 4a cubed, b to the power of 7 c cubed over negative 2 a b squared c cubed then i've got minus 18 a cubed b cubed c to the power of 7 over negative 2 a b squared c cubed notice that every single time my denominator is exactly the same as what it was to start off with i don't change it just because i'm i'm not splitting the denominator up i'm splitting the numerator up and the denominator is staying the same Okay, now we're going to go and simplify each of these separately. So the first one, I've got a negative, and a negative makes a positive. My 2 and my, five, my 10 can simplify, that gives me 5 and 1. I've got a to the power of 5 over a, that gives me a to the power of 4, and that cancels. b over b squared, that gives me 1, and that gives me b. Remember when we are dividing powers of the same base? we subtract the exponent. So that's how I got each of these over here. So c to the power of 6 and c cubed. I'm dividing by c cubed. So c to the power of 6 is 6 minus 3. That gives me c to the power of 3. And this simplifies to 1. So for my first term, I end up with positive. I've got a fraction because there is something in the denominator, which is b. So it's positive 5 a to the power of 4 c cubed over b. So that's my first term. My next term I've got plus negative plus divided by minus is minus. Okay. Then I've got a 4 and a 2 which can simplify. That gives me 2 and 1. a cubed and a simplify to give me a squared and that's 1 b to the power of 7 divided by b squared, I, su I subtract the exponents, that gives me b to the power of 5, and this gives me 1. And then the c cubed can just cancel completely because they're exactly the same. And that gives me, 
I have only ones in my denominator, so I don't need to write this one as a fraction. I can just write it as a normal uh, term. So I've got 2 a squared b to the power of 5 and the c is cancelled. The next one I've got minus divided by minus, that is plus, and now let's simplify. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Then I've got a cubed and a. That simplifies to give me a squared and 1. Here I've got b cubed and b squared. That gives me b and 1. And then c to the power of 7 and c cubed gives me c to the power of 4 and 1. So again, my denominator is 1. So I don't need to write a fraction for this one. I can just write what I've got in my numerator, which is 9 a squared b c to the power of 4. And that's what you should get for that example. So now I'm going to give you some that you're going to do for yourself again. For these ones, I'm going to give you five minutes to work on this, these examples.
Okay, so let's see how you did with those examples. So the first one we had negative 15x cubed minus 24x squared plus 3x all over 3x. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to split it up. So that gives me negative 15x cubed over 3x minus 24x squared over 3x plus 3x over 3x. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do now that we've split it up is we need to simplify. We need to see what we get for each of these fractions individually. So I'm going to simplify this over here, 15 and 3. 3 goes in there 5 times, 3 goes in there once. x cubed and x, x goes in there x to the power of 2 times, and that gives, goes in there once. Okay, so that gives me, for this one, I have a negative divided by positive is negative 5x squared over 1, or just 5x squared. Okay, next one. I've got negative divided by positive is also negative. 3 goes in there 8 times, and 3 goes in there once. And then x squared and x give me x at the top and 1 at the bottom. So I have 8x over 1, or just 8x, so minus 8x. Then I've got a positive divided by positive is plus. And then over here, my 3s cancel, and my x's cancel, and that just gives me 1 over 1 which is 1. So for this example, you should, have get, you should have got negative 5x squared minus 8x plus 1. For the next example, we're going to start off with the same, splitting up our fractions, so that gives us 8, a to the power of 8, b to the power of 4, c to the power of 6, over negative 2a squared bc cubed, minus 2a squared b to the power of 5, c to the power of 5, over negative 2a squared bc cubed, and then plus 4a to the power of 5, b to the power of 9, c to the power of 6, over negative 2a squared bc cubed. Okay, so now we're going to go and simplify each of those fractions. So the first one, I've got a positive divided by a negative. That gives me negative. 8 and 2 simplify to give me 4 and 1. 8, I mean, 8 to the power of 8 and a squared give me a to the power of 6 at the top and 1 at the bottom. b to the power of 4 and b give me b cubed at the top and 1 at the bottom. And c to the power of 6 give me c to the power of 3 at the top and one at the bottom. So that all gives me 4 a to the power of 6 b cubed c cubed all over 1 or just 4 a to the power of 6 b cubed c cubed. Then I've got a negative divided by negative is positive. Then I have 2 and 2 those cancel giving me 1 and 1. a squared and a squared also cancel giving me 1 and 1. Then I've got b to the power of 5 and b. That gives me b to the power of 4 4 at the top and 1 at the bottom, and c to the power of 5 and c cubed gives me c squared at the top and 1 at the bottom. So again, everything in the bottom has cancelled, leaving me with 1, so I just need to write everything in the top. That gives me 1 b to the power of 4 c squared. I don't need to write the 1, so it's just b to the power of 4 c squared. Then the last term, I've got a positive divided by negative is minus 4 and 2 give me 2 and 1 a to the power of 5 and a squared gives me a cubed at the top and 1 at the bottom. b to the power of 9 and b is b to the power of 8 at the top and 1 at the bottom. c to the power of 6 and c cubed is c cubed at the top and 1 at the bottom. So once again, I have everything cancelling out at the bottom, which means I just need to write the stuff at the top. So I've got 2a cubed b to the power of 8 c cubed. So that's what you should have got for question b. Right, then question C, we've got 3d to the power of 9, f to the power of 3, minus 6d to the power of 9, e cubed, f, plus 24e to the power of 7, f to the power of 7, all over negative 3d, e squared, f cubed. Okay, so first, we're going to split it up like normal. And that gives us this over here. Then I have minus 
and then plus. And I'm going to put in all my fraction lines. And now we can go and simplify everything. Okay, so the first one, I'm going to end up with a negative for my first term. And over here, this cancels, give me 1 and 1. d to the power of 9 and d cancel giving me d to the power of 8 and 1. I have no e on the top, so that's just going to stay e squared at the bottom, and the f's, the f cubes cancel completely. Okay, so I end up with d to the power of 8 on the top and e squared on the bottom. And to write it big so that you can see it nicely. Then I've got minus and negative divided by negative, that is plus. The 6 and the 3 simplify to give me 2 and 1. d to the power of 9 and d give me d to the power of 8, and that cancels. e cubed and e squared give me e on the top and the e on the bottom, e squared on the bottom cancels. And then the f and the f cubed give me 1 on the top and f squared on the bottom. So for this one, I end up with 2d to the power of 8 e over f squared. And then I've got plus divided by minus is minus. 24 and 3 give me 8 and 1. E squared, or D is still there. I can't do anything with it, so it stays as it is. The E squareds cancel. And F to the power of 7 and F cubed gives me F to the power of 4 and 1. Okay, so for this one you should have got at the top 8 F to the power of 4 over D. So that's what your final answer for question C should have looked like. Negative d to the power of 8 over e squared plus 2d to the power of 8e over f squared minus 8f to the power of 4 over d. And then the last question you had was question D. Same thing again, we're going to start off by splitting it up. So I've got negative 10x squared y to the power of 7z to the power of 8 over 5x cubed y squared z cubed plus 15x to the power of 6 y squared z to the power of 6 over 5x cubed y squared z cubed and then minus 30x to the power of 4 y cubed z squared over again 5x cubed y squared z cubed. Okay, so now I'm going to go and put in my fraction lines and then we will simplify. Right, so first I've got this one over here. I've got negative divided by positive is negative. 10 over 5 gives me 2 over 1. x squared over x cubed gives me 1 over x y to the power of 7 over y squared gives me y to the power of 5 over 1 and z to the power of 8 over z cubed gives me z to the power of 5 over 1. So for the first fraction over here I got 2 y to the power of 5 z to the power of 5 over x. Then I've got a plus and my 15 and 5, 15 over 5 is 3 over 1 x to the power of 6 over x cubed is x cubed over 1. The y squareds cancel, and y to the power of, or z to the power of 6 and z cubed is z cubed over 1. Okay, so that gives me I, all of my everything in my denominator is cancelled, so I'm not going to have to write this one as a fraction. So I can just write 3x cubed, z cubed. Then I've got minus. And we can cancel the 30 and the 5. That gives us 6 and 1. 
x to the 4 over x cubed is x over 1. x or y cubed and y over y squared gives us y over 1. And z squared over z cubed gives us 1 over z. So for this one, I end up with 6xy over z. So that's what you should have got for question D. Okay, so now let's go on to our last main example that we're going to have for today, which is this one over here. Now we've got two fractions that we're going to be simplifying, and they are being subtracted from each other. So the first one is 18 x squared minus 30x, 30x over 3x, subtract. 24 minus 12x over 4. Okay, so first I'm going to split up all of the fractions, but I have to be careful when I get to this over here. So first of, I have this one, that's nice and easy. I've got 18x squared over 3x minus 30x over 3x and then I've got a minus. Now here is where I have to be careful. This whole fraction is being subtracted which means that each part of the fraction is being subtracted so I need to actually put this in brackets when I split it up over here. Remember a fraction acts like brackets so it is holding everything together and saying all of that has to be done together. So if I've got a minus in front I have to be careful that I put this in brackets like this before I apply that minus. Okay, so I've got 24 over 4 minus 12x over 4. Okay, so now we've got four fractions that we need to simplify. In the same way as we are used to doing. So I've got over here, 18 over 3 gives me 6 over 1. x squared over x gives me x over 1. Over here, oh, let's simplify that, that gives me 6x. My denominator is just one, so I don't have to write it. Then I've got minus 30 over 3 is 10 over 1, and the x's cancel. So that gives me minus 10. Minus brackets. Over here I've got 24 over 4. 4 goes in there 6 times and in there once, so that is just 6. Minus, and over here, I've got 12 over 4 gives me 3 over 1. So that gives me 3x. Okay, so now I end up with something that looks more like what we're used to when we're doing the multiplication of a polynomial by a monomial. I have to multiply into the brackets. This over here, remember you can't see it, but there is an imaginary little 1 that we're going to multiply into these brackets over here. So I have to get rid of the brackets before I can carry on simplifying. So I'm going to multiply this negative 1 into each of the terms using the distributive law of multiplication. So I've got 6x minus 10, and then negative 1 times 6 is minus 6, and then negative 1 times negative 3x is plus 3x. And now I can simplify that by collecting my like terms and simplifying them. So I've got 6x plus 3x gives me 9x, and then minus 10 minus 6 gives me minus 16. And that's what you should get for that example. So when we have one like this, where you've got two fractions, or more fractions, with polynomials divided by monomials, that you have to add or subtract. First, split them up, but when you have a fraction like this that you have to split up and there's a minus in front especially, you have to make sure you put it in brackets. I didn't have to worry about putting this one in brackets because there's nothing in front of this fraction to worry about. But this one I have the minus in front of the fraction and that is very important because when I multiply in here, I change that minus to a plus. And if I didn't put the brackets here, I would still have had a plus here. And that would have meant that I would, I mean, I would have still had a minus here. And that would have meant that I would have got this wrong. So you need to make sure that you put those brackets there. So you split it up, then you simplify each of the fractions, then you multiply out the brackets and collect your like terms and add them. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself, 
and I'm going to give you four minutes to do these examples. Okay, so let's see how those uh, questions went. So the first one you had was negative 20a minus 5 or plus 15b over minus 5 and then plus 15a minus 3b over 3. So the first thing we're going to do is split it up. So I've got negative 20a plus 15b and they both are over minus 5. Then I've got a plus. Okay, now this one over here, this is actually should have been like that, okay? Because there's a plus, I don't really have to put the brackets in. The only reason I need the brackets here is because the minus needs to be multiplied into the brackets. If I multiply anything by positive 1, 
it stays the same. So when I've got a plus in front of my, my fraction like this, I don't have to worry about, about putting the brackets there. So I can just go and split it up like normal. So I've got 15 over 3 and minus 3b over 3. And those are all fractions like that. And now I can go and simplify. So I've got a negative divided by negative is positive. 20 over 5 is 4 and 1. And then I have my a. So it's going to be positive 4a. Then I've got a positive divided by negative is negative. The 15 and 5 simplify to give me 3 and 1. So that gives me negative 3b. Then I've got plus 15 over 3 gives me 5 over 1, so that's 5a. And then minus 3 over 3 simplify to give me 1 and 1, so that is just minus b. Now I can simplify my like terms. So my a's, I've got 4a plus 5a is 9a. And then minus 3b minus another b is minus 4 B. So that's what you should have got for question A. Okay, question B. We had 4x squared minus 12x over 4x minus 20x squared minus 15x over negative 5x. So the first thing we're going to do is split it up and make sure we put this in brackets because I've got a minus in front of that fraction over there. So I've got 4x squared over 4x minus 12x over 4x and then minus in brackets 20x squared over negative 5x minus 15x over negative 5x okay so now we need to go and simplify each of those fractions so the first one I've got 4 and 4 can simplify to give me 1 and 1 x squared over x is x over 1. So that gives me just x. Then I've got minus 12 over 4 is 3 over 1 and the x's cancel. So that gives me minus 3. Then I've got minus and in brackets 20 and 5 gives me 4 and 1 x squared over x gives me x over 1. Okay, so this one, it's a positive divided by negative, so it's negative 4x. Then over here, I've got negative divided by po negative is positive. 15 over 5 gives me 3 over 1. And the x's cancel. Right, so for that one, I get minus 3, or plus 3, sorry. And now I need to simplify by multiplying into those brackets to get rid of them. So I've got, remember, a little imaginary 1 over there. So I'm multiplying negative 1 by that and negative 1 by that. So first I've got x minus 3. Then negative 1 times negative 4x is plus 4x. And then negative 1 times positive 3 is minus 3. So when I simplify that by collecting my like terms, I end up with 5x minus 6. Now if I did not put the brackets in here, that would have stayed, oh, this would have given me a plus, that would have stayed a plus, I wouldn't have changed it to a minus, and my 3's would have ended up cancelling out. And that would be a problem because it's supposed to be minus 6, not 0. Okay, then the last one, question C. Same concept as the last one. We are going to first split up, making sure we keep those in brackets. So I've got 10 x squared over negative 2x minus 12xy squared over negative 2x. Then I've got minus in brackets 15xy to the power of 4 over 3xy squared minus 9x squared y squared over 3xy squared. And now we need to go and simplify all of our fractions. So, the first one, I've got a positive divided by negative, that is negative. 10 over 2 is 5, 
and x squared over x is x over 1. So that gives me negative 5x. Then I've got a negative divided by a negative is plus. 12 over 2 is 6 over 1. The x's cancel, and I'm left with y squared over there. So I've got 6y squared. Then I've got minus, and in brackets, I've got 15 at over 3, which simplifies to give me 5 over 1. The x's cancel, and I've got y to the power of 4 over y squared gives me y squared over 1. So that gives me 5y squared all over 1. And then minus, it's a negative divided by positive, is minus. 9 over 3 gives me 3 over 1. The x squared and the x simplify to give me x over 1, and the y squareds cancel. So I end up with minus 3x over there. Now I'm going to get rid of those brackets, so I've got minus 5x plus 6y squared. Now I multiply the negative 1 in there, and that gives me minus 5y squared. Multiply the negative 1 there, that gives me plus 3x. And that, when I simplify my like terms, I'm going to end up with negative 2x plus y squared. And that's what you should have got for question C. And that is how you divide polynomials by monomials. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.